May I, uh, in the interest of time, may I invite Professor Pernia to give his talk? Uh, good morning, everyone, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, President Pascual, VP Concepcion, and uh, co colleagues in the university, guests and friends. Uh, this will be quite a transition from natural science to art, poetry, literary uh, matters, uh, to hard empirical economic and social data. Uh, so the, my presentation is essentially pretty plain, simple, and straightforward. And you can easily identify uh, yourselves with this one because it is really part of our daily, day-to-day -day existence. So the, the, uh, I just preface it by saying that uh, this subject is really transdisciplinary. Population, unemployment, poverty, inclusive growth, and so on. They are transdisciplinary. Uh, the, the point here is that uh, for a policy or strategy for inclusive growth, there has to be interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary research to, to make that policy or that strategy really effective, meaning it should really uh, involve the different sciences and social sciences. This is the flow of my presentation. The first part is the positive part. The second part is the more normative, meaning recommendations part in terms of a strategy for inclusive growth. And I will have some uh, counterfactual uh, musing about what might have been if we had uh, followed a different uh, path in the past in, in relation to the economy and population. So this is uh, so where we are. Uh, and how do we compare with our neighbors? This is the, these are the data, the most recent ones. They're, these are comparable. And uh, you can see that uh, in terms of demographic indicators and poverty, uh, we have been lagging behind, or we have really fallen way behind our Asian neighbors, including the more recent members of ASEAN. Okay, uh, poverty is the, more, the most uh, important uh, column there, about 26.5%. Uh, and uh, I think uh, the, the, the data that will come out this year, uh, taken in 2012, we'll see that our poverty incidence or poverty rate has essentially flatlined. It hasn't improved uh, much from uh, the past uh, decade. Whereas our neighbors have really, uh, you know, uh, drastically reduced their poverty. And this has to do, this is uh, related to total fertility rate, the average number of children a woman would have over her life, reproductive uh, ages, and met need for family planning and so on. Uh, these are demographic and economic indicators, which are also highly associated with uh, uh, the, the demographic and economic indicators that, which are associated with, with each other as well as with poverty. So again, the, again, the, uh, the key columns here are column number three, gross national income per person, uh, which see us uh, falling behind uh, the, our older Asian ASEAN neighbors, uh, namely Thailand, Indonesia, and Malaysia. Our growth and, and related to that is our also our la being uh, laggard in terms of gross domestic investment as a percent of GDP, which uh, would uh, you know me uh, would which would indicate how investment now would indicate how how our uh, growth path will be in the future, and also poverty incidence, or the, the extent to which we can reduce uh, poverty. OK, uh, some explanations. Uh, this, uh, these are uh, what we now call stylized facts. The Philippines, uh, we got stuck with the protectionist import substitution industrialization, industrialization policy in the 60s through the 80s 
we essentially had a closed economy, which also, uh, this kind of policy was also followed by our neighbors, except that they gradually, they graduated to economic openness and export oriented industrialization. And this is really what drove their economies to higher levels. And the, on the other hand, uh, while we were among the first in Asia to adopt uh, a family planning program in 1970, our, that program, family plan program, stalled or was scuttled in the late 70s owing to opposition from the Catholic Church hierarchy. And this is now well known. Again, as I've said, these are stylized facts already. Uh, so the twin mistakes, twin policy mistakes on the economy side and on the population side resulted in weak long-term economic growth, which is also referred to by Raul Fabella as pujeric development, also written about by Michael Tan in his column, uh, which meant small demand for labor, meaning limited job creation vis-a-vis -vis robust growth of population and the labor force, meaning large labor supply, which resulted in chronic high unemployment rate and persistent poverty. And this is, uh, if we look at our long-run economic growth as well as population growth, then this is the, this is the, these are the trends. This, these are the quarterly GDP growth rates. This, we can average the, it uh, in a smooth, uh, this smooth line here. This is population growth rate. So uh, our economic growth was just really climbing very glacially. Our population growth was also coming down, but not, not as much as uh, uh, what had happened in our Asian neighbors. That's from 1970 to 2010. Okay, but then if we look at earlier, starting in 1950, our economic growth path has even been on a downtrend, downward trajectory. And that's because we had uh, higher growth rates in the 50s and the, to, through the mid-60s. Okay, so that's, that's, uh, that's so, which shows that uh, our performance in a decade and a half uh, versus uh, 12, 12 uh, four decades later on, it influenced this, uh, you know, downward trajectory in the economic or GDP growth path. So, again, if we look at 1950 to 2010, compare ourselves with Thailand, these are GDP, uh, GDP per capita incomes relative to, G, to the U.S. This is our long-run economic growth path or uh, per capita growth path income. This is uh, how Thailand overtook us in the, about the early 80s. And this is with respect to Indonesia. Again, we were way up, uh, way, we were much higher than Indonesia, but the, in terms of per capita income, but Indonesia overtook the Philippines in 1990, around 1990. So in terms of uh, poverty incidence vis-a-vis uh, -vis poverty incidence here or poverty rate, in percentages, family size. Uh, this is the pattern that has been holding since the mid-80s when uh, uh, FIES started, uh, you know, uh, collecting data on family size and poverty incidence. This is the same pattern. It hasn't changed. So it's really just, uh, a, you know, a repeat of uh, earlier uh, associations between uh, poverty incidence and family size. And uh, in terms of uh, wanted versus actual fertility, number of children, we see that these are the poorest, the lowest quintile, the highest quintile. The poorest quintile, they, re they have actually 5.2 or even more, six uh, children on average but they want only this number. So there is this, uh, this, is the, this is the result of unwanted pregnancies or unplanned pregnancies. We will go up the highest uh, income level, income quintile, 
they, their actual fertility is actually a little bit more than their desired, their wanted fertility. And this is the average for the country as a whole. Okay, and this, uh, this uh, data relate also to the age structure of the population. Okay, uh, Philippines, uh, you can see that the, this is the dependency ratio. Uh, ratio of, uh, I mean, uh, ratio of the uh, youth dependence, 0 to 14 ages, to labor force age group. And you can see that this is uh, rather wide compared with our, Asian na uh, our neighbors in Asia in, the, uh, in this uh, years 1990 and 2000 and if we go if we go later you can see that this has hardly changed the dependency burden a ratio of this to that has remained about the same uh, relative to our neighbors and this is uh, 2010 to 2015 this is a projection and we will still have this dependency burden relative to this one uh, and uh, this is also expressed in terms of uh, median age of the population vis-a-vis -vis Indonesia and Thailand this is our this is currently our median age uh, this is Indonesia and this is Thailand so that's the result of uh, higher fertility or faster population growth in the Philippines okay uh, let me talk about uh, this uh, age structure is related to what's re referred to as the demographic economic sweet spot. And uh, this, uh, this, is the, this would be the outcome of demographic transition when a country's total fertility rate drops drastically to replacement fertility, which, uh, which had been achieved by our neighbors some time back. But uh, this, uh, this, this concept is, uh, seems to be misunderstood by businessmen, including our uh, central bank governor and uh, finance secretary, who say that this uh, sweet spot or this demographic transition is achievable by 2015. Uh, this is called a sweet spot because uh, it, uh, it re means uh, demographic dividends. When we have this kind of demographic transition, uh, there will be smaller dependency burden, greater human capital investment per person, higher quality, more employable and productive workforce, higher wages, higher investment rate, faster economic growth, and so on and so forth. So it will be a virtuous circle. Uh, but our estimate, our projection is that under a business as usual scenario, meaning no uh, RH, Philippines is unlikely to hit sweet spot before 2030. 